Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, welcome to Crosstalk. My name is Elijah Weiss and this is... I'm Caleb Wyatt. My grandfather, Dr. Randy Weiss, says a lot of things. And today, me and Caleb are going to break down his most recent episode and say what we got from him and what God spoke to us. First of all, I want to say, this guy is a man of order. Yeah. Every day, doesn't matter where he is, Bible, coffee, sitting down somewhere. I really appreciate it because for me, it's kind of like, that's what I want to be. I want to have so much, you know, awe and reverence for the word of God that he's been following Christ for 50 years and still every single day, Bibles, studying. It's like, you know, I'm a pastor's kid. So often as Christians, it's like, oh, I already heard that story. I already know this. And it's not the case. Like the word of God is alive, living, active, sharper than any two edged sword, uh, uh, piercing through bone and marrow, spirit, and like crazy that he is living that out, you know? I mean, for me, it's hard to just even like sit down every single day and read my word. But this dude's been doing it for 50 years. Yeah. 50 years, that's like, that's crazy. 50 years, he wakes up, sits down with his four Bibles, his journal, and his coffee. It just reads like it's routine. Like I try to get that is is a uh, like I admire him for that. I mean, that's and, just and crazy. Even further than that, it's like like he doesn't take a he. It's not a job to him. No, it's not like a. Oh, I have to read my Bible. No, like he genuinely loves yeah. sitting and studying. But I've been on. He's my grandfather. You know, we've been on vacations together with the whole family, and every single morning. If I happen to wake up early, because this guy still wakes up, he doesn't sleep in. If I happen to wake up early and walk out on the porch, yeah. sitting there, Bibles, journal. He doesn't take a break, you know? That's crazy. Like, that's literally how I want to be. I want to yeah. be so in love with God that, like, it's not a job. Like, I, it's not a, I feel like so many of us take it as a chore. Facts. Like, we have to read our Bible. Facts. We have to pray. Facts. Like, it's not a chore. Like, we do it because we love God. That's how I want to be for real. And, and the crazy thing is, like, he is, it, it almost takes a certain amount of, like, humbling yourself. Yeah. Because it's so easy, like we've talked about, like, as Christians, it's so easy to just say, uh, man, I've heard the story of David and Goliath. Like, I've heard the story of Samson. Yeah. I heard him come in one time. We have a program out. Go look at it. It's called Samson and the Jawbone of a What. That program came, went out. He came in here and he read his journal on what he studied about Samson. And he got something completely different than I've ever heard. The the countless amount of times that I've heard the story of Samson, I've never heard it the way that he explained it. And it's crazy because it's so easy for us as Christians to be like, oh, I already know what happened. I already know the meaning of it. No, you don't. God can speak to you more. God can tell you more about it. And it's crazy to me that he's living proof of that. Literally. Like 50 years, you know how many times he probably read, read the story of Samson? Uh, he probably reads that Bible at least once a year. Oh, cover to cover. more than that. Yeah, so he's heard the story of Samson <laughs> quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just crazy. And, and even further than that, like, and it's honestly, like, if you think about it, this is, like, one real vacation that they got to enjoy. Yeah. And still. Still he managed ministry. Bro, that is crazy. And, and that wasn't even his goal. It wasn't like, a, let me go preach to this person. Let me go speak. God sends the people. You know, he talks yeah. in the program at the beginning. He says, you know, we have to be open and, and ready to listen to the Lord. Yeah. All he does is sit there and study the word of God and the Lord sends people. And there's some programs like that they haven't heard or some journals yeah. to where like when I tell you, like, I've only been here a couple of weeks. Literally, I've heard him go through countless journals of just him interacting with people. Every day is something new. And I'm like, I'm like, how old are these? He's like, oh, this was this was just last week. I was like. Yeah, no way, bro. Like yeah. you're telling me all of this, like that is crazy. Like if there was like a TV show reenacting like yeah. what happens, I would watch it every single day bro. religiously, like at weekly. I would be like, oh, journals with Randy Weiss. Let's go watch what happened <laughs> today. Like, like it's cr- it's unreal, honestly. Yeah. The amount of ways that God sends people, yeah. and all He's doing is sitting there reading His Bible, and That's and you know He says something at the beginning of the episode. He He's talking about. We have to be open to the voice of God. We have yeah. to be ready to move when God sends someone. And that's, that's all he does. He just listens. And, you know, God is good and people's lives are touched 
because of it, which is crazy. You know, this program that just went out, he talks about two different people that came up and spoke to him while he's reading, same day. On the, on the same, same day. cruise, bro. Same cruise. Like, that is cra that's crazy, Same bro. cruise, same day. First of all, that's only one journal. We recorded like four Multiple, or five that bro. day. And all there was from like, that same vacation. All from that same vacation. Like, probably in the same whoa. week. Yeah. I was, and there was like six people, more than six people. There was yeah, countless was, number of people. And if you think about this specific episode, like in a matter of an hour probably, two people were ministered to because he was open and yeah. ready to move when God sent someone. All he did was sit there and read. Yeah. Oh. One thing that he said though, whenever the um, the lady and Chris came up to him and was like, are you a pastor? He was all like, no, I was just a guy whose life was changed by Jesus. Mm. I was like, wow, bro. Like that, that speaks volume right there, 100%. bro. Like whenever our lives are, are truly touched and whenever our lives are truly saved by God, the world, the outside world should know. Yep. This person is different. This person has a light that shines out from him. Yeah. And, it, and it's crazy. nothing about title. Literally. Like, it's, it's, nothing about, it's nothing about, oh, yeah, I preach at this church. Or, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm this position at this place. He's on TV every week preaching the gospel. And when every someone week. asks him, are you a pastor? His answer is, I'm just a man whose life was changed by Jesus. That's crazy. Like, isn't that what we're called to be? That's yeah. all we are as beings of Christ. He, uh, he just posted on the Twitter saying, he was talking to God, asking God, um, do you want me to be a minister? He was like, I have plenty of ministers. I just want you to be a full-time Christian. Mm. I was like, wow, bro. Like, bro, just be coming out with like quotes on top of quotes, bro, <laughs> daily. He just bro. talks. It, like Literally, quotes just come bro, out. I'm like, let me write that down real quick, bro. A hundred percent. It's, it's really easy to run his social media <laughs> yeah. because he, you'll just be having a regular conversation Literally, with him and it's like bar, bar, bar. <laughs> you just be like, spitting knowledge out of nowhere. I'm like, this. And that's what happens when you study the word of God yeah, yeah. religiously, not even religiously, like lovingly, like you're not studying the word of God, like you said, because it's a chore. You're studying the word of God because that's something yeah. you love. And that's something that you, as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, yeah. love to do. And that's 100%, 100% facts. Like, we're, we're called to be an everyday Christian. Yeah, that's, that's crazy in this world, too. Whenever we see everything that's happening right now, and we just get built up with so much anger, so yep. much hatred, yep. to be like... Because we talk about it all the time, how yeah. there'll be moments throughout our dates where we're just like, man, this is frustrating. And then we sort of just have to take a step back and realize, like, I need to show God's love. Yeah. I need to express God's love, even in the hardest situations. 100%. That, that, could be, that could be crazy difficult. Pastor Randy talked about how there's different, like, forces. How yeah. the, like, different the spirits. force of God, the Spirit of God will have you stand up and say something and talk to people and minister. But then there's always a spirit that's going to be dragging you down. Yeah. And I was like, because he talked about it Chris. whenever he was talking to Chris, yeah. how the spirit of God was wanting him to say more, but he didn't get the chance to. Yeah. And so he was writing down a letter to that's Chris crazy. and Chris walked up. Yeah. And I was like, that, the that's crazy <laughs> thing about that is he, he said, because first yeah. he talks about Chris, Chris told him when Chris was talking to him, um, Chris said that he, a couple years ago he was at a church and then he stood up because God told him to and he, he sat back down and he felt God, condemnation yeah. from it and he felt so like he couldn't live with it and he felt so bad about yeah. it and the crazy thing one, the, one thing he said he said there's no condemnation in Christ so even though you felt bad about it even though yes God was trying to move there's no condemnation that you didn't and then when you, when you see his position they're talking and, and Chris tells him this and then Chris leaves and he feels it He's like, my, my grandfather, he's like, man, I didn't say everything I was supposed to. And he, he said on it, he said, I prayed that God would send him back to me. And just like you said, he's <laughs> sitting there writing a letter That's to Chris, crazy, hoping bro. he would see him to hand it to him. And Chris That's walks up bro. to him because he said he was looking for him. That's God. Literally, That's, that's God, God, bro. And it's crazy. That's, it's crazy to think about, bro. Yeah, and, and he got to speak to him. Yeah. The, the power of prayer is just... God's there, bro. Yeah. You know, before Literally. I was thinking about it a minute ago, before every time we record, we pray, of course. And I was thinking about it and I was like, man, we really do need God. Like, yeah. 
100%. This is not just a regular, oh, let's record this, let's just put this out. No, this is ministry. Yeah. This is trying to touch people's lives, trying to let us be the light that people hear. This isn't just a, all right, man, let's just go record. We got to get this filled in. We got to do this, do that. If we're not asking for God's help in everything we do, even if we see it as an everyday minute yeah. task, what are we doing? Literally, yeah. He was saying that, he said something, he said, people are trying to use this as a sounding board. Yeah. And you're a lousy sounding board if you're talking. Yeah. And that's, that's so true because how often, you know, it's, it's so much easier, in Chris's instance, it's so much easier to spill your guts to someone you don't know. To someone you just True. met on a cruise, reading the Bible, it's so much easier to really talk about how you feel or what you feel about Christ or how you feel with you know, your relationship with God because you don't know the person. You're not going to see them again. And as Christians, if God sends someone and they're just trying to talk and that's their therapy right there in that moment and we're just called to listen and we're just sitting there talking like, oh yeah, you got to do this. Oh yeah, you got to do this. That's not the help that God is trying to help us give. A hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's really, really encouraging that even with all this wisdom, even though he probably knows every Bible story, he doesn't sit there and tell them, you got to do this, you got to do yeah. this. He doesn't sit there and say, oh yeah, I've been in ministry for 50 years. I'm a pastor, this and that. No, he sits and he listens. And you will never know all he does. Chris might be watching this episode and he's going to be right thinking, now. is that the same guy? And he'll never know <laughs> yeah. if he doesn't see that episode that he was talking to someone who's been in ministry for 50 years Crazy and is a bro. TV minister <laughs> and is speaking at, past, uh, at churches and has been doing this for 50 years. He would never know because that's not what we're called to do. We're not called to speak. We're not called to boast. We're not called to fix all their problems. We're just called to listen and called to just do what God asks us to do. If God says talk, we talk. If God says listen, we listen. But it's crazy that we always want to take it into our own hands, take it into what we think is right. Yeah. And that's not what we're called to do. We're lousy sounding boards. <laughs> if bro, we're talking. That, that's going to go out on Twitter, bro. <laughs> that's going out on Twitter. <laughs> the conclusion to all this is that God is good. God is good. Every time. And every time. God is good. And, it, and even in 50 years of ministry, we're never supposed to stop learning. Yeah. We're never supposed to stop seeking. We're never supposed to stop listening. And I think for me, that's the biggest takeaway from this program is, what are we doing? Yeah. Who, who am I that I think, oh, I already know that Bible study, story. Oh, I already know what this verse means. When this man right here, my grandfather, has been doing it for 50 years and he can still learn from it. Who am I to think that I know it all? Who am I to think that I can fix every problem? True. I really like talking about what we get from the episodes because a lot of times it's easy, you know, we're behind the camera sitting there and I mean, we record for hours at a time. It, 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 <laughs> hours, bro. Like, and it's, <laughs> it's really easy to, you know, kind of let it, let it become like, oh, this is just an everyday thing, or yeah. oh, this is just a regular recording. I like sitting here and dissecting what we learned, yeah, because that's exactly what it is. It's it's teaching. Yeah. We're learning from these simple stories, and it's really encouraging. So, I want to encourage you. If you haven't seen the episode, go hit the link on our YouTube. It'll be in the description. It's called Summer Vacation and a message to Chris. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a really good episode, and I encourage you just to. Try to see what you can learn from it. You've heard what me and Caleb have, have learned from it, but try to see what you can learn from it, what God speaks to you. Until next time, shalom and God bless.